If you do a job search for cybersecurity jobs, you will find that there are more SOC analysts or cybersecurity analyst roles advertised more than any other cybersecurity specializations, more than penetration testings, more than digital forensics. So a SOC analyst is a highly sought after title and it's a highly sought after job. You will also see that the salaries are quite good, especially the more senior you are. Uh, there are simply more roles advertised than people. Um, we simply cannot find enough qualified people who want to work in a security operation center. There are many reasons for that which I'll dig deep into but essentially um, this role is highly technical. You need to have a lot of strong technical expertise and you need to be an analytical person so someone who thrives on analyzing threats, analyzing analyzing incidents. In this video I will share with you what it's actually like to work in a security operation center. I'll also share with you sort of the training and certifications that you need to do to get your first SOC analyst role. If you've been watching my videos for a while you know a little bit about me so I used to manage uh, a cyber security digital forensic and incident response team what you didn't know about that team is actually that team sits within the broader security operation center so there is a massive SOC and within that SOC there was my team we were the incident response and digital forensics so some of the individuals I was managing their title was uh, a SOC analyst even though their specialty was incident response or digital forensics so let me expl explain how does a typical security operation center work so the function of the security operation center essentially is to detect any attacks or any hacks that happen, respond to them, contain them, and prevent them from happening. They also play a proactive role in trying to prevent those attacks from happening. So any attack or any hack that happens, there is a lessons learned and we try to implement controls and measurements in place to prevent that hack from happening again. So within the SOC, there are three broad functions of the SOC. The first one, which is the one that I used to do, is incident response and digital forensics, usually abbreviated as DFIR. Essentially, those individuals are responsible to stop the hacks meaning if someone is trying to hack or break into the company the security incident responder needs to respond to that incident by stopping the hack from happening isolate the machines that's that are infected and also they perform forensic analysis on that machine whether it's a laptop or mobile phone or a web application to understand how did this hack happen what was the weaknesses that was exploited for this hack to happen and also to prevent future occurrences so that's a very important task that's one task of a security analyst. The second broad function of a security operation center, we refer to it as threat management. So this, those individuals are responsible for detecting the hacks, detecting the attacks. So they sit all day, they try to baseline what um, normal network traffic look like, so much so that when something abnormal happened or when there is an anomaly or maybe there is a malware or something unusual happened, they need to detect that, generate an alert so that the security incident responder can go and respond to, the, to those attacks. So this is a really vital role of the SOC. They look through the logs, they look through every application you have. Usually we have something that we call a SIM. In that SIM we essentially get logs from every machine in the company, usually every machine. That includes firewalls, IPSs, proxies, laptops, uh, desktops, applications, all of it goes into that SIM. And the threat management team have that difficult job of trying to decipher those logs, trying to make sense of those logs and trying to alert for any abnormalities. The most popular tool in use is actually Splunk, which I will talk about in a little bit, but that's basically what the threat management team does. Again, those individuals are called uh, a SOC analysts or some of them are actually called SOC engineers because they engineer those detection cases. So different titles just means the same thing. The third function, which you don't really see it in smaller companies, but it's definitely there for medium size and bigger companies is threat intelligence. So threat intelligence, it's a group of individuals individuals that are always looking for what's the latest malware, what's the latest hacking group doing. So they really look for sort of new signatures, new, we call them indicators of compromise. They're looking for those new techniques and new hacking tools that are being used in the wild. And they're trying to make sense of those tools. And then they send them to the threat management team so that the threat management team can detect those hacks before they even happen. So it's a really proactive role. And it's one of those niche areas where you really need to sift through large volume amount of news, of RSS feeds, of uh, hacking group news, and there's even tools that do that for you. So essentially it's a proactive role. You're looking for threats, you're looking for hacking information for any intelligence out there so that you can feed it to your threat management team and they can detect the hacks before they happen. So this might all sound like um, a little bit technical and a little bit complicated. And look, I'm not gonna lie, it is a fairly technical role, but I'll simplify it for you. So you may be wondering which type 
type of roll do I recommend? Which one is the best roll that you can do, especially for a beginner? And the answer to that question is a little bit challenging because it really depends on your personality and what you want to do. But I'll share with you a story of what my day-to-day -day looked like when I was working in a SOC and also I can share with you what the other teams were doing and then maybe you can decide for, self, for yourself which of those roles you prefer. So starting with the incident response and digital forensic, I mean that role is actually in my opinion one of the most difficult ones you can do in the SOC because think about it, you are on your feet as soon as there is an incident. Some incidents are small, some incidents are what we call false positive, so it's just noise, it's not really an incident, but some incidents are quite real. Sometimes it's a ransomware, sometimes it's a massive attack that brings the entire network down and you essentially are the person who needs to respond to that and bring it back up. So it's a really high demanding role. Also think about it, there is like pros and cons for that role because as an incident responder in a security operation center, when there are no incidents, you sort of have downtime and in that downtime you're expected to improve things, improve your tools, learn something, but those downtimes can be long and boring sometimes, I'm not gonna lie, but at the same time you might get a ticket or an incident at 1 a.m. You might get a ticket or a hack at 3 a.m. or even on a weekend or during Christmas. So you are expected to work those hours. So if you're looking for something that's like a 9 to 5, quite relaxed, just be mindful that being an incident responder or a digital forensic analyst may not be the role for you. And if you're looking for something routine, where you do the same thing day in and day out. So I would personally avoid being a security analyst uh, in an incident response capacity or a digital forensic capacity. As for threat management and threat intelligence, those are two areas where you can expect to work nine to five. Like it's a well-structured role where you go, you look at the tools, you look at your logs, usually you're working with something like Splunk for threat management or some other tool for threat intelligence. You're creating your use cases. I wouldn't say it's coding, but you need to learn the Splunk language. So that's something you probably need to learn and I'll go into that when I explain the certifications and career path here. But it's just a more structured uh, way of working. It's not like you're responding to hacks or, 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 or something that's really high priority. Usually you're working in a very structured way. You've got your team meetings, you've got your tickets, you've improved something, you worked on something. So it's a very viable career and those individuals are highly paid because we, again, as I said, we don't have enough people with that particular skill. You also need to know a lot about a lot of things. For example, if you're looking at logs from firewalls, you actually need to know how firewalls work. If you're looking at logs from web applications, you also need to know a little bit about web applications. You are not expected to be an expert on web applications, but you still need to know a little bit about how they work. So you need to have that broad level of knowledge. And in threat management, you actually will have the time to Google things, search them. So even if you're not an expert in certain areas, you can upscale in those areas. So I think it's a good job if you like routine, if you like to sit in one place and do similar tasks every day that can suit some people so I think that can be a good career for you it will also give you exposure to a lot of things to a lot of applications it will give you that end-to-end -end views that usually you don't get to see if you just do one thing now before I talk about certifications and how to actually become a SOC analyst I just want to say that being a SOC analyst or someone who works in a security operations center it's a very respected uh, role in the business the business respect that it's very important for the company you are at the forefront of, of protecting that company so you are essentially the person standing between your company and the hacker you are the first line of defense you're also the last line, line of defense when things really hit the fan so it's a good job it's well respected you're usually well compensated because um, the skills are a little bit hard to gain so people pay good money for it the more senior and the more experienced you get you might become a senior SOC analyst or even a principal SOC analyst I've seen crazy salaries for people with the right experience now having said that that it can be a little bit daunting in the beginning uh, which is what I will explain now when it comes to certifications and training so the first certification that I recommend you do to start on the journey of becoming a SOC analyst it's the CompTIA cyber security analyst certification it's called CESA plus I'll just show you here in the website so as you can see the CompTIA CESA plus really covers all the broad areas of working in a security operation center so it covers threat management and vulnerability management it covers software and software and system security it covers compliance and assessment security operations and monitoring and even incident response so it's a really um, I think content heavy certification just a little bit of warning if you've done CompTIA A plus or CompTIA network plus or CompTIA security plus just know that CompTIA CESA plus is five steps above it's a little bit harder it's challenging it's hard but don't let that stop you just be prepared to put in more time put in more work and I know you can do it it just needs a little bit of preparation now 
if you look, if you scroll through the website, you, um, it says that the Compte Assessa Plus will lead you to be a SOC analyst, which is what we're talking about here, or a threat intelligence analyst, again, works within a SOC, security engineer, which can mean many things, um, incident responder, a whole heap of other things as well. So it's, it not only prepares you to work in a SOC, but I think it also can open doors to many, many things that we do in cybersecurity. All of these skills are in demand. So I think it's a good, good foundation, broad foundation, but also a little bit deep. Looking through the requirements, I mean, um, they recommend that you have uh, four years of minimum experience. Now, it's not a must, like you can be certified without that experience, but having four years of experience in CompTIA's view will give you a leg up into doing that. They also recommend that you have Network Plus or Security Plus. That's what the official CompTIA recommendation is. My personal recommendation is do CompTIA Security Plus, then do CESA Plus. You don't need the Network Plus, you don't need the A Plus. I know some of you will be wondering, so what if I don't have experience, what if I don't have knowledge? I know, start with Security Plus, learn it really well, pass the exam, then you can do CESA Plus. Just be prepared that it will take a lot longer to pass CESA Plus than it took you to pass Security Plus. The second certification that I recommend is, I guess, tricky, not because it's difficult, but because of the price. Um, it's the SANS GX certification. Just a little bit history for you, SANS GX were sort of the only cybersecurity training uh, provider that was available a few years ago, not long ago, like maybe 10 years ago, I can't remember exactly. But the only issue with them is the price. So the training course right now, like the five days training course cost about eight to 9,000 US dollars. And that's a lot if you ask me. It will include two attempts and a practice exam and a certification at the end. Um, <clears throat> the training quality is super, super high. I cannot recommend them enough. I've never attended a SANS training that wasn't mind-blowingly good. So the quality is there. The training is very useful. The certifications are widely respected in the industry. So when someone shows you a SANS or a GX certification, you know that these individuals know what they're talking about. So it's a very good certification. Um, I did create another video that I'll leave a link above here for about how to do SANS certification in a cheaper manner. It's possible, not guaranteed, but it's possible. And I'll take you through how I personally have done them in a cheaper, I didn't pay $8,000. But to work in a security operation center, I think the king of those certification is SANS GX GCIH, which is the certification to be a GX certified incident handler. The training is called SANS 504, Hacker Tools, Technique and Incident Handling. This is an excellent training um, even if you have zero background in IT or security or anything I still recommend you do security plus first but if you didn't that's also fine this training will really explain to you the SANS methodology how we detect incidents how we respond to incidents it will give you some hands-on training not extensive but a little bit it will expose you to a whole heap of tools that are very useful for a SOC and for anyone who's applying for a SOC role this certification is gold on your CV it will look really really good but I know the cost is high watch my video on how to get them cheaper it will really help you if you want an alternative that's also cheaper elan security thankfully they have a certification called elan security certified incident responder very similar to the sans certifications with a little bit of difference it's hands-on it's a lot cheaper than sans the brand name elan security is not really popular in the industry people don't know about it but i know the quality of the training is top notch so we'll still gain those skills and you can still put them on your cv so that's another way for you to gain some Something similar to the SANS certification, similar skills, and it, it will help you to become a SOC analyst. For threat management, if you want to specifically focus on threat management, those certifications that I mentioned above, they will also help you a lot in threat management. But with threat management, the tool that's most commonly in use is actually Splunk, which is a SIEM. Put the abbreviation here. So Splunk is really a tool where you get the logs from every system in the company and you start generating those detection use cases. So it really maps out what normal traffic looks like and then any anomaly you can create an alert on that to create that you need to learn the Splunk language or you need to really configure Splunk and to do that uh, you need to learn how to use Splunk as a tool and you need to learn the language of Splunk Splunk is a commercial tool it's not a free tool but thankfully they have a lot of free training so you can spin up a Splunk instance in the cloud and you can practice your heart out and you can even get certifications I'll leave a link below to the free training from Splunk and it's like varying levels from from they explain to you what Splunk actually is all the way to being an advanced Splunk user. If you put your head down and study Splunk and become an expert in Splunk, trust me, you will get a highly paid role in a SOC. Um, there is massive shortage for people with Splunk skills and it pays a lot. If being a cybersecurity analyst sounds exciting to you, if it's something
something that you want to do, my recommendation for you is to start working on certifications right away. I give you a few options. Um, my recommendation is always start with Security Plus and then work your way up. It might take six months, it might take one year, but I promise you, you will come at the other end a better professional with more knowledge, more expertise, and you will improve your likelihood of getting that SOC role that you're after. If you're not sure whether you need a degree or you want uh, to gain some experience, or if you're still confused as to how to get your first role in cybersecurity, this video will help.